Hey, what's up guys, Riff here. So today we're gonna do another round of Topic Parkour, trying to cover several different sets of news that I think you guys will find interesting. So let's begin with this headline from That Park Place titled, Former Sweet Baby and Client Square NX takes a $350 million hit in value as stock plummets. Now it's never been officially confirmed that Square NX is no longer working with Sweet Baby. However, there's some circumstantial evidence to suggest that's what happened. Now, ever since their rebrand about a month ago of their website, Sweet Baby removed their client list entirely. But before then, Square Enix was removed from the client list, which really only leaves two options. Either A, they're no longer working with Sweet Baby, or B, they're trying to cover up, at least publicly, their connection to Sweet Baby, which we know is pretty much a death mark for companies these days. But let's get into the article. So it says this, Square Enix shareholders received a rude awakening on Monday as the video game company behind Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts saw a 10-point dip in the Japanese market. This equates to a market capitalization loss that measures in the hundreds of millions. The drop came in wake of a Square Enix financial report that actually offered some good news to investors. The company saw $136 million in profits over a six-month period ending in September of 2024. This represents a year-on-year -year increase of 22%. However, several worrisome figures seemingly caused enough unease for the stock to still take a hefty hit. Despite the increase over that six-month period, operating profits have been on a heavy decline throughout 2024. Most notably, Square Enix found itself 27% down in quarter three, of 2024. That's starting to look like the financial reports of any color, especially with their EN branch. But anyways, yeah, things are not looking very good for Square Enix. They kind of effed around and found out. I mean, they're working with Sweet Baby. Their connection definitely did not help their situation. But again, it looks like Square Enix is struggling at the moment alongside a lot of different development companies in the gaming industry right now. But let's move on to an IGN article here, which is a whole bunch of cope. It says this, the AAA games industry bubble has burst and a smaller scale, more creative approach may be the only way for it to survive. So they're right in some regard, right? The bubble has burst, but the issue is they don't really know what they should focus on because IGN and a lot of other shills in the industry, they think live service games, these big budget forced attempts at, you know, weak reworking of what's already been successful is going to be the future when that's not the case. I mean, you look at Concord, for example, right? Live service game also trying to basically be an Overwatch clone. It fails. We have too many examples like that. And at the same time, we're seeing big budget games succeed and big projects succeed. So I don't think it's really like that crazy of a thing, I, I do believe the industry is doing really well. We're seeing a lot of failures, but there's a lot of success. Like the numbers games like Black Myth Wukong are polling are unbelievable. Like they're really amazing when you stop and think about it. So it's not all doom and gloom. It's just a lot of very high highs and very low lows in the industry right now. And also we're seeeing a lot of excuses being made. So as someone ta uh, tags Mark Kern here, saying they went to another app just to get away from you and cope. So a lot of people in the industry, like Mike Rose here, they are trying to come up with every excuse they can to justify why certain games are failing, typically woke games. And you see this right here on Blue Sky, the new safe haven for all the very progressive people in the gaming industry, saying everyone trying to work out why video games aren't selling anymore. Too many games, prices are too low, marketing is hard. When the answer this time is actually simple. The world got effed and no one has money. People are struggling to pay bills and rent, let alone buy your game. That is just patently untrue. Okay. The industry is doing really well. And when games come out that despite even having a 60, $70 price tag, if they are appealing, people are buying them. I don't know where these people are trying to get this logic when the gaming industry right now is turning out more sales than ever, clearly people are willing to give money if something's good. What people are not willing to do is waste their money on junk, on slop. Like we've seen with many games this year, these AAA releases trying to justify their very hefty price when the game itself is an absolute joke. And that is the copium 
we're seeing here. But let's continue on to an absolute stellar article. Uh, uh, Award-winning, I'm sure, from PC Gamer here. It's titled, Steam Accused of Normalizing Hates and Extremism in the Gaming Community in New ADL Report, Anti-Defamation League. Uh, well, they've been busy uh, dealing with Twitch and going after all the nonsense going on over there. But apparently, Steam is now the new target. So what are they talking about, this stuff? Well, if you open up the article, they're saying stuff like this. The Anti-Defamation League, a U U.S. organization that aims to combat anti-Semitism and support Israel, has published a report alleging that Steam is rife with extremism and anti-Semitism and accusing Valve of allowing the spread of hateful and extremist material through a highly permissive approach to content policy. So what exactly are they talking about? What is the thing that is really setting them over the edge and, and making these very bold claims about Steam, of all places, being some kind of a, a hub for radicalization? Pepe the Frog. Yep. Pepe the Frog and swastikas. We're using that in the same likeness here. Pepe the Frog and swastikas are most common extremist symbols found on Steam, according to the report, respectively representing 54% and 9% of detected symbols. Why on earth are we holding these things with the same weight? This is just peak journalism and peak ADL, to be honest with you. This whole thing is just very pathetic. But anyways, moving on, there's also a very great sense of irony here. So as Cabrutus here, the uh, creator of Sweet Baby Inc. Detected, as well as DEI Detected, he says this, Oh no, it isn't so funny putting real-life politics stuff in your entertainment, huh? Referring to this individual who's very upset with the uh, Splatoon situation here where someone wrote Trump 2028, and they're very upset, saying, Can we just stop? When will this stuff end? I just want to play Splatoon, man. Which is very, very ironic. It's funny how now things have flipped a lot of people who are trying to justify the existence of politics left and right in games are now upset that the other side is trying to include things in the games and they just can't handle it. Uh, I am of the belief nobody wants to see any of this stuff, but if you've been tolerating it for a long time and even celebrating or encouraging this sort of stuff and now the other side's doing it to you, you're a hypocrite if you're upset about it because you have fostered an environment where... Certain political views are being injected into everything. And now that it's happening to you, these people are very upset. And it's just peak irony, of course. But I think that's going to do it for this video. Obviously, several different topics all revolving around gaming here. As always, uh, feel free to share your thoughts about all the various topics we covered in today's video in the comments section. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, thanks for the continued support on the channel. And I will see you guys next time.